Good morning here at beautiful Bullock Point. We will be heading north towards Inskip Point and Fraser Island this morning, targeting pelagics, particularly long tail tuna. Later in the vid, we'll do some four wheel driving at Fraser Island's main attractions as well, and hopefully see a dingo. Our four wheel drive plan of attack for the day is to take the Manta Ray barge from Inskip Point to the southern tip of Fraser, then depart the barge as the tide is coming in, drive past Hook Point on the beach, head north past Dilly Village and visit the inland lakes of Lake Wobby and Lake Mackenzie. We will cut in at Cromwell's Break, just south of Cromwell's campground off the beach. Once here, we will do the great walk Mackenzie to Wobby. We are targeting long tail tuna or mackerel today in the, the Wide Bay Bar and Middle Bank area. It's 5.30 a.m. and we've got an early start. The action is insane with schools of long tail tuna going crazy. The plan is to fish with 100 mil stick baits, both sinking and floating, and also 35 gram laser metals. We will trial for pelagics with a deep diving Samaki pacemaker off one side and a shallow diving Halco off the other. I have the 4000 Stratic with 30 pound braid and 40 pound leader and a 7 foot 6 to 8 kilo. No. I have a 4000 Stratic with 30 pound braid and 40 pound leader and a 7 foot rod that is 6 to 8 kilograms. Uh, I'll use that to cast and target. After trolling around and having a toothy critter smash and bite off my $30 Samaki pacemaker, we began to encounter the schools of tuna. They didn't want the stick baits, so we switched over to the metals with instant success. Taking some screaming runs and nearly spooling me, I just held on to one before getting another pretty soon after. They are a beautiful fish that are great on the table. We did lose one though, being spooled before actually losing the lure. You have to go hard on the drag when using reels with minimum line capacity. very well today the camera cut out obviously as it broke when we were swimming at Lake Mackenzie but we got two of these ones two big beautiful bluefin northern bluefin a long tail second one a bit longer and fatter the first one went harder a little bit smaller though two sweet fish what's the first second one Butterballs, these guys. Very disappointing that the camera didn't work. There's nothing you can do about it though. It's just fishing.
Yeah, that'll be all right. Did you? We've parked at the car park for Lake Wobby. We'll walk through the forest to the edge of the Hammerstone sand blow before descending down the sand blow to finally reach the crescent shaped Lake Wobby. We'll have a refreshing swim here with the catfish before climbing the northern side of the sand blow to the lookout. Lake Wobby has formed over time as the migrating sands of exposed dunes gradually blocked a coastal creek. Today, the lake and the sand blow are in a slow motion battle for survival. Slowly but surely, sand is blowing down the east facing dune and filling the lake. In a century, those sand dunes will march across Fraser Island, so eventually Lake Wobby will disappear under the sand. Located in the Great Sandy National Park on the eastern side of the island, it's a small freshwater lake. It's close to the ocean and has a little inland desert. Lake Wobby is a greenish coloured lake known as both a window lake and a barrage lake with a maximum depth of 12 metres. It's the deepest lake Fraser Island has to offer. Caddies. There's little ones there, but... I just went past, so it was about five of them. Catfish. After finishing up with a nice swim at Lake Wobby, we headed off towards Lake Mackenzie along the inland tracks before taking the northern road, then on to Lake Mackenzie Road. Lake Mackenzie is blessed with blinding white sand and impossibly clear water that gradually fades into a deep blue. It's one of Fraser Island's most visited natural attractions, located approximately halfway between Kingfisher Bay Resort and Yurong Beach Resort. Driving the sandy inland tracks to get there is half the fun. Lake Mackenzie is a perched lake containing only rainwater held in place by sand and organic matter. It's not fed by streams, has no groundwater, and does not flow into the ocean. Yeah. 
Don't do a Dive under. <laughs> Woo! Where at? I need to go dive under. Go dive under. Woo! Love me, love me, love After visiting both inland lakes for lunch in the swim, we took the full drive track back out to the main beach where we will head north past Piyungan Rocks and Piyungan Valley, past Rainbow Gorge, the Oaks, Yidney Rocks, Happy Valley, McLaughlin Rocks, Chard Rocks, past Eli Creek where we will finally stop to enjoy the Mahino Wreck. SS Mahino washed ashore in 1935 following a cyclone where the disintegrating wreck remains as a popular tourist attraction. It was also used as a hospital ship by the New Zealand Naval Forces during World War I as His Majesty's New Zealand Hospital Ship No. 1. Where are we going there? Eh? Yeah, but there could be quicksand. <laughs> Eli Creek is located on the eastern beach of Fraser Island. Eli Creek pours up to 4 million litres of clear, fresh water into the ocean every hour. You can walk up the banks here in Pandanus Line boardwalk that follows the creek, lower yourself into the cold water, jump on your giant flamingo and let the current take you all the way back down to the mouth of the creek. Here you can park your four-wheel drive, roll out the awning and set up your camp chairs in the creek itself if you want. Slide. 
Yeah, this is the fresh water one, natural one. Here they come. Here she comes. Got no food for you. It's a male. <laughs> He's out <just, laughs> of the car.